When it comes to buying snowmobile outerwear and gear, it can be hard to make the right decision for yourself. So today, I have five things that you need to consider before you purchase your next piece of outerwear or gear. Coming up. So, fresh off the press, a bunch of 2019 climb gear has just arrived. It's the end of August and uh, Gear is starting to be released and uh, some people are starting to think snow already. Uh, today I wanted to kind of look at some of the gear that I'm going to be running this year and I wanted to share some things with you guys. Um, I have a lot of things I think you should consider um, when you're going to buy a new piece of outerwear. Whether it be any of the brands, any of the styles, whether it's insulated or not, there's a checklist that I think uh, is kind of great to go down and look at when you're choosing to spend, you know, upwards of $600 on a jacket or something like that. So the first thing that I want to touch base on is price. Price is a tough thing because not all of us have a billion dollars and can spend a ton of money on our gear. So when it comes to price, you need to kind of know your budget on what you're looking for and know where to spend it, right? Jackets and pants and boots and all these things come in a lot of different price points. So putting the majority of your money where you need it most is the smartest thing to do. So some things that are not as important, in my opinion, um, to have the best name brand things would be your base layers, right? So when we talk about layering, um, you can find a cheap version or not a version, but you can find a cheap base layer that's polyester or wool or something that, you know, isn't over the top expensive because, you know, uh, it's the material. So, you know, you can really kind of, as long as it's not cotton, you can get away with um, something that's, you know, not name brand or super expensive. So then you can take that money and put it towards, um, you know, those boots or that, those bibs or, or jackets, something that is a high price item that should be high price because of how important it is, not only to you staying warm and dry and having a good time out there, but also your safety. And what do you know? Some Teton Merino wool, short sleeve. Actually, same shirt that I'm wearing right now. So spending that money on your jacket, pants, and boots, those are my three big things that I think a lot of your money should go to are those right there. So after you've kind of decided what your budget's gonna be for your high price items or what you wanna spend here or there, you know, on those things that I think you should really invest most of your um, money in when it comes to your outerwear and gear, then the question you need to ask yourself is durability versus lightweight. And uh, that is the battle almost in life, it seems like. So many things, you know, you can get the lightest running shoe, but if you run 70 miles and it's falling apart, or, you know, you get the more durable version and it's usually gonna be heavier and, you know, all these things. So. Like something that I always think about for myself is I always go lightweight on the top with more durable on the bottom when it comes to snowmobiles. So for like insulation purposes, Chris Brandt is actually the opposite. He goes more insulated up top with a lighter weight um, sort of pant on the bottom. So just kind of preferences. The reason that I like to run the heavier, I wouldn't say more insulated because my insulation layer is very even all the way through and I can talk more about that later. but. Uh, the reason I go heavier on the bottom is that's where the running boards are, that's where the trees are, that's where all these obstacles are that potentially um, can damage my gear. So I go durable on the legs in hopes that you know that gear piece will last longer, and then I go a little bit lighter weight on top to you know keep my mobility and my shoulders and stuff up because you know there is definitely a truth to the fact that if you do have a bigger, heavier, more durable piece of gear on your your top, uh, it, it does feel more restrictive. So that's what's so great. The new um, Storm Bib from Climb, uh, it's been redesigned and uh, we're gonna take a quick look at, look at it real quick. So this is a great piece. This is kind of a middle ground piece that uh, there's pieces above it and below it for kind of above for durability would be the togety bib and um, 
below it for durability, but more lightweight, flexible would be the stealth pant or bib. So this is a great middle ground pant and uh, it's also matches the new um, all the new redesigned um, storm uh, parka or jacket call it parka jacket. Google it, what's the difference? I don't know. Uh, so really excited about this. This is a full full length zip down the leg. That's absolutely necessity, you know. I got knee braces on and a lot of things on, so um, I need that full zip down the leg. It's also have has a high bib. And I wasn't really a bib guy before um, I started really wearing climb and uh, I absolutely love bibs now. It doesn't let any snow get in between that layer of jacket and pant. And also it doesn't, you don't need to have anything super restrictive around your waist. Um, you can kind of run a little bit looser um, pant style and uh, feel a little bit more free out there. So the third thing that I think about, where'd my hat go? The third thing to think about, especially for those Midwest guys, like I was saying, is insulated versus non-insulated. Now, I know in the Midwest, I haven't even ridden there because it's so cold, um, but I know that you guys in the Midwest run a lot of insulated gear and stuff, but out here in the, on the West, everybody that I ride with and know runs a non-insulated shell jacket, and what that allows us to do is layer underneath. Um, so basically we can have just a lightweight layer if it's a warm day um, because you know we're standing up working digging sleds out all sorts of stuff and in the mountains um, especially out here in the west temperatures change quite a bit throughout the day or from day to day temperatures really do fluctuate quite a bit so you might go out one day and then the very next day you're wearing a totally different base layer underneath so let me see if I got a jacket here we can talk about it. That's definitely insulated. Ah, right here, this is the matching piece, um, the matching top to the Storm bib, the Storm jacket. Redesigned this year, really, really excited about it. Like I was talking about, the insulated versus non-insulated. So basically, we open it up here, and as you can see, all there is is kind of a mesh drop-in um, liner. Um, it's not going to give you any warmth, so you basically re regulate your heat by your layers. From day to day, I typically usually just run a long sleeve compression kind of base layer, and then my Liet Protective's body armor, which uh, keeps me pretty warm, and that kind of acts as my body armor slash insulating layer. And pretty much every single day, that's what I'm running. I kind of adjust my vents here and there to let heat out, but... Uh, I really keep it pretty much the same day to day except when it comes to spring riding or if it's really, really cold, then I'll throw on maybe an extra little um, layer to, to help me keep that warmth in. So if you guys are in the Midwest and you're coming out West, I highly suggest you consider um, a piece of gear that is non-insulated so you guys don't come out here and absolutely melt because uh, the insulated gear really overheats you in our conditions. Now I guess some... Uh, these are the new Adrenaline GTX BOA boots. Also have been redesigned this year. I love when they redesign products because it just means they made them even better. I haven't actually ridden in these. I've put my foot in a Proto or a sample last year. And the great thing about these now is they are gonna hold the base of your foot in even better. So one thing that Climb does, which is really awesome is Every year they take the Climb Backcountry team, and which I'm part of, and go get all of them together, all of us together, and basically talk about what gear pieces we like, what gear pieces we're using, what um, gear pieces we think need to be improved, and all sorts of things. So a uh, cool thing for me is the Storm Jacket. A few years ago, I wanted to bring a jacket kind of like the Storm Jacket to the line. There wasn't more of a a freer feeling jacket with a hood that was non-insulated shell. Um, there was nothing like that in the line. And it's awesome to see two years later they've redesigned the Storm Jacket in 
to sort of something that I was talking about. So I'm really excited to try that and uh, I'm gonna be in that most of the year putting it through the paces. Another thing that a lot of the backcountry team members, including myself, talked about was the GTX boot, um, not holding our foot as tight um, down kind of by our toes or I don't know what you call that, the bridge of your foot, no, bridge, I don't know. They've kind of redesigned the BOA system on it and it definitely holds your foot in um, better and a better footbed. So really excited about that. I have another pair of boots coming, um, the Havoc boot, which is kind of a cross for snow bikes or snowmobiles. Um, I'm really excited about that, but that one's not here yet. So that's gonna be exciting. This is also gonna be exciting. A great tried and true boot. So I'm really excited about that. Okay, so the fourth thing I wanna talk about when choosing the right piece of gear is fit. Uh, kinda just like I said with the Storm jacket, that jacket has a little bit more freer fit um, than some of the other Climb jackets. So Climb is kind of known for a, a more tailored fit, uh, sharper edges, and uh, you know, really technical gear, opposed to like, if you put a guy in climb gear and then you put a guy in snowboard gear next to him, they would look totally different. They're both essentially trying to do the same thing as gear. They're trying to keep you warm and dry, but they're definitely tailored to different fits and uh, you know, riding styles, of course, we're comparing a snowboard to a snowmobile, but even some of the other brands, um, their fit is a lot different than climb. So really kind of going with not only the brand, but also the the style that fits you, fits your riding style. That's why it's great to be able to kind of go try on some things and uh, figure out if you like it or not. Talking about sizing really quick, I am I wear a large t-shirt. I'm in between a large and a medium t-shirt. I'm not a very big guy. I'm about 5'10", 5'11", um, between 165 and 175 pounds, usually 168.2 if you really care that much. And I wear um, a large jacket. I could squeeze into a medium, but with my protective gear kind of on as well, uh, I wear a large. It gives me a little bit more room, and that way it, 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 the jacket is a little bit longer for me as well. Um, and then the same goes for the pants. I definitely could wear a medium, but I wear uh, my Mobius knee braces, so they're a little bit bigger. And what that basically just allows me to have more movement in the knees with my knee braces on. And then, you know, I wear the bibs, so they're kind of loose up top, which I like for, for comfort reasons. And they're also, you know, nice and long. If I, if I do wear a medium, I tend to wear a medium tall in climb gear. So that's uh, really exciting. Oh, yeah, and in the one piece, I do wear a medium because uh, the, the large is actually um, too tall for me. So I do wear a medium there and a um, little bit more restrictive, but not too bad. Um, not bad enough for me not to wear the onesie, which is an awesome product. And I think I've got one somewhere that I'll bring out and show you guys in another video. Oh, the revolutionary climb bell. Just kidding, it's a belt. All right, so the fifth thing, uh, number five on this list of things you need to consider is which pieces you're going to invest in. And you know, some pieces you need multiple items of. Maybe not jackets or pants or boots, but things like gloves, right? when you really go out there and ride hard, um, I go through a lot of gloves in a day. So I have multiple sets of the same gloves just so when those get wet, I can put a new pair on. So just kind of thinking about all those things through. Gloves and goggles are items that you can never really have too many of in your backpack or your bag because when it's gnarly outside, it's always nice to just put on a nice dry set of gloves um, no matter how Gore-Tex, Space Age, next level they are, somehow I can really seem to ruin a pair of gloves pretty fast. And I really do prefer the lightweight, um, non-insulated, non-waterproof glove just because of the way it feels and the bar feels. So when I'm running those gloves, I really have to use a lot of them to get through a wet, stormy day. Uh, the same goes with goggles. Even if you're the best manager of goggles, there's definitely days when I go through a few pair of goggles. So um, in my opinion, it's worth investing in multiple pair of goggles, not just lenses, but goggles. Um, lenses are great. Um, I don't like to swap them out while I'm riding, but um, that's also in another video. A multiple pair of goggles, because when it's wet, gnarly, and cold outside, you just want to take those goggles off, throw on a fresh pair, and you're back out having fun. So. Just kind of thinking of those things like, what am I gonna need multiple of for you know that fifth thing? 
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video of five things to consider when choosing a piece of outerwear or gear to bring with you into the backcountry. I had a great time making it, and I really do believe if you kind of go down the list of those five things, it will help you make the right decision and give you a better backcountry experience. If this video brought you any sort of value, please consider subscribing as I'm coming to you guys all winter long with new content regarding sleds, snowmobiling, and anything of that nature. I'm doing a video series on the gear that I choose to wear head to toe. I'm going to re review and look at every single piece, giving you guys insight on why I choose to run what I run. So. I'm recording those videos now, but if you're tuning in a little bit later, check the description below as I have links to all those videos. Also in the description, I've got a link to Climb's website so you guys can check out all of their gear, maybe do a little browsing and uh, look at some gear that you might want to upgrade to. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys on the snow.